Hey guys, and welcome to this first edition of Workbench Wednesday on my YouTube account. Last week on Instagram and Facebook, I did a Mail Call Monday post where I showed you this Vallejo Rust and Chipping Effects acrylic paint set available through Micromark Tools. I also featured a couple of projects I did using the Chipping Effects process. This week, I take it a step further, open up the box, and show you how I use the chipping medium to achieve the results you see here. Stay tuned to find out how. All right, I moved over to the workbench and I'm going to go ahead and open up the rust and chipping effects kit. Included in the box are six colors of paint, the matte varnish, and the chipping medium. Also included in the box are these very detailed step-by-step -step instructions where they go through the rust and chipping process from start to finish. But we'll just put those away because I can show you everything you're going to need to know. So one thing I like to do when I get a new bottle of Model Air paint is to take off the cap. It just comes right off. And throw a BB inside the bottle. Put the cap back on. And now that acts as a mixer when you shake it. Sometimes the BB is a little light so it gets stuck here at the bottom. Uh, just squeeze the bottle and then that loosens it up and then you can start shaking it again. Now I've got another one of these Promotex Herpa open top trailers that uh, I'm going to paint up and chip it up and weather it and put it in service for my Simplify Sand and Gravel company. And since it's sealed in there, I'm just going to put on some gloves. I'm not going to have to wash the model or anything. Just handle it with these latex gloves. And then we're going to take it apart. So it's easier to paint. Now that I've got the model out of the package, I'm going to put it in my paint booth on this helping hands tool, which I've got a link in my description for on the Amazon idea list, as well as this Tamea turntable, which makes painting a lot easier. Getting started, I'm going to put a few drops of the surface primer. It's the German Red Brown. Just going to put in the airbrush unthinned and start spraying a primer coat. Now that the primer is dried overnight, I took it outside and I'm going to spray it with some Montana matte varnish and that's just to protect the primer color so that during the chipping process I don't actually go too far and scrape through to the original color of the model. Now that our clear coat is dry I'm going to put on the first color that I'm going to use for rust chipping and that's this dark brown and go ahead and hit up the areas which I think the rust will build up the most and that's going to be the ribs here and the bottom portions across the top and then these side parts in the back. Now keeping in mind you don't have to chip over every place that you sprayed this rust. So it doesn't really matter if you cover the whole entire thing. Um, so actually, the more spots you cover with the rust that's going to show through, the better. Now that I've got some dark coloring on there, I'm going to go ahead and lighten it up a little bit with a little more of the orange colored rust, just so we get a little bit of variation when we go to chip this. Here's a good look at the trailer with all the rust effects applied. We're going to let this dry, then we'll move on to using the chipping medium. And while I wait for the trailer body to dry, I'm going to go ahead and spray this undercarriage with just some tire black. 
It's a great color for painting over black plastic. Makes it look a lot more realistic. It's now time to brush on the chipping medium. And for this, I'm just gonna use a normal paintbrush and straight out the bottle. Just put a thin coat of the chipping medium around all the areas in which we think we'll be wanting to scrape off the final paint color. Keeping in mind just because we put down the chipping medium doesn't mean we have to activate it. So once again, kind of the more the merrier and that just gives us more options once we put on the final paint coat of where we want to put the rust marks. So with that being said, I'm just going to pretty much coat the entire sides of the trailer. The only thing you need to really pay attention to here is just that it's not too thick of a application. Because we will be putting our final coat of paint over this medium once it's dry. The chipping medium has dried, so now it's time for the final coat of paint. In this case, I'm going to mix fire red and white to give a faded red color. Note that these colors are not included in the kit. I'll mix these colors straight into the hopper of the airbrush, adding the red color first since it's the main color with a few drops of white. Then I'll mix it and spray the model. And here's a look at the trailer body with the final coat of paint. Now we're ready for the chipping process to begin. So I've just modified a cheap, hard bristled craft brush and dipped it in some water. And wherever we want to expose some rust, we're just going to let the water take effect and a little bit of pressure and before long, we'll start seeing the rust color show through. And you want to be careful not to press too hard as once the water kind of soaks in then the top coat comes off fairly easily and in this situation I don't really want to do excessive amount of rust just enough to show that this trailer has been well used. Here you can see the chipping effects that have been done on the trailer body. turned out pretty good and I uh, didn't go all out on this one as I stated earlier just want to show a little bit of wear and tear on a trailer that's still in good condition to be used at the sand and gravel plant from here I'm just going to do a little bit more weathering and painting on it and then move on to some final steps to finish this thing off so I just sprayed it with another coat of matte varnish and now I'm cut out this little template that I'm going to use to spray a different color red and make some paint out blanks on the side of the trailer like they purchased it, did some paint work to it, and then we'll relabel it for Simplify Sand and Gravel. To help finish this trailer off, I'm going to use this Wilson Grain Trailer decal set from Lone Star Models. It's got the reflector stripes that I'll put along the bottom. And it also has some decals for the mud flaps and the trailer numbers. And for the company lettering, I'm going to use this set of Gothic letters and numbers from Microscale decals. Prior to applying the decals, I'm going to hit the entire model with a light coat of gloss varnish 
and that's just going to help the decals blend into the side of the model. For the decal application, I'll just brush on a little bit of micro set before I place the decals onto the model. And once the decals are pretty much in place, I'll go ahead and apply some Walther's Solvaset setting solution. And that's going to help them conform into place and basically kind of melt to the model. Once the solver set dries, I go ahead and hit it with another coat of the clear varnish. And as you can see, the backing on the decals isn't noticeable at all. Now we're about to wrap this thing up. So I go ahead and swap out the wheel sets. These are the factory ones with some that come off an Atherin container chassis. They look a lot better and uh, they're also not as wide. So it just kind of makes the model look a lot more realistic. And one last step before hitting it with that flat coat is just take a little bit of pan pastels, put it on the brush, and then brush it off a little bit on a paper towel or whatever, and then go ahead and put it on the model. I'm going to put some white on these tires, and that gives them a pretty good aged look. And you can also use these pan pastels to fade in areas as well. Real simple, just barely put any on the brush. Lightly apply it. And that gives a good look of some faded paint. And that just kind of helps age the trailer and break up the consistency of the sprayed on paint. That final coat of Montana matte varnish has been applied and the model has been moved to the layout and it looks great sitting in front of the Simplify Sand and Gravel Company. Thanks for watching this how-to video on using the Vallejo Rust and Chipping Effects acrylic paint set. Don't forget to check out the description below for a link to this wonderful kit on the Micromark Tool website. Use my affiliate code 10 model trains 365 to save 10% off your order and make sure to stay tuned for future videos.